Again, there's always the risk of being stung, but... I hate this enclosure. It's a extra large critter keeper, but the lid is just constantly jammed. This lid is also a joke at keeping in humidity. Excuse me. So like everyone else, I watched the new Wednesday series, which is obviously way up my alley. I love Tim Burton. I've, I've always loved Tim Burton. Everything Tim Burton has done has made me the person that I am. And one of my favorite parts of the show was the little tiny scorpion storyline. They wondered what kind of freak would have a scorpion for a pet. Yeah. So I know it's just like a teeny tiny part of the show. If you haven't watched it yet, you absolutely need to. But like Stranger Things, there was that like little spider, you know, storyline. Wednesday has a little scorpion storyline in it. And I'm not going to say too much because spoilers, but it kind of inspired me to go ahead and finally rehouse Jinx because I have been wanting to forever and I just, I haven't. I didn't really know what to rehouse her into because she's in the largest critter keeper that they actually make and I feel like it's still just not big enough. But then of course recently Tarantula Cribs came out with this giant cube enclosure and oh my god, it is gonna actually be totally perfect for this scorpion. I don't know why I just now realized that but here we are. So yeah, we're gonna set jinx aside and let's go ahead and prepare like a awesome new enclosure that's going to hold humidity better that's going to give her more room and i also just want to add in a little bit more decor things to climb places to hide all of that so let's get into it let's do a quick little unboxing i love these enclosures something i really like about them and i Granted, yes, this was provided to me. I am an affiliate. If you ever shop with Tarantula Cribs, use my code CAT10. It'll save you 10%. I love these giant cube enclosures. They are so useful. Because the thing is, is like large critter keepers have that top that just lets all the humidity out immediately. And exoterras also have that problem. They come with the mesh lid, which, you know, mesh in itself is a little bit of a debatable topic due to like safety concerns with tarantulas and stuff. But this is like the size that I need and it's not a screen top. It's not mesh. So this is the ventilation on the top and there is plenty of it, not enough to actually like dry out the enclosure. And as I was leaving his warehouse yesterday, he stopped me to have me also try this new lid for it. So I guess if you do put a more arid species of scorpion or tarantula or whatever in it, or something that just needs more ventilation, there's also this option now, which is really good. Um, most of the enclosures actually have this option on, on their website. So because Jinx is an Asian forest scorpion, I'm going to stick with, with the lid that it comes with. But this is a great thing. I actually have a flat rack scorpion I'd like to put in one of these eventually so I would probably go with this lid for him. All right so for the substrate I'm going to use just some reptile soil. Yeah that's a ton of substrate like let's just compare. This is going to be so much more space for wandering and stuff. The scorpion is like fairly active so that's going to be a great benefit for them. I am going to actually mix a little bit more sand in it. Now this substrate already does have sand in it but I just wanted to put in a little bit more and then we're just going to mix it up. Tulip you can come here and like be curious and look at it but as soon as the scorpion comes out you're gonna have to go in your kennel because I can just see you sticking your nose right on it. Isn't she so precious? She's so good you guys. Things are going great. I mean she's a little crazy because she's a puppy still but like just really like started to fit in and she's grown a ton. She can jump on the bed now which is good because she used to wake me up in the middle of the night going <laughs> trying to get on the bed. All right this consistency feels Fabulous. And now we're going to start putting some decor in it. So I actually have this old perfect piece of driftwood for it. So yeah, this piece of driftwood will be awesome. I'm just going to put it right here and we're going to bury it a little bit. Here's a piece of cork from the tank it's already in. So I'm going to probably just put some cork around and that's just going to give it like more things to climb on. They are pretty active. Ooh, yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to put in a nice, generous size bowl. This is because they do actually like to go in their water dish and just chill or just walk through it, at least from what I've observed. So because this water dish is really deep and I do know that it's going to climb into it, I wanted to throw in a few rocks. 
and that will for sure be enough to help it get in and out of the dish if it has any issues. I also wanted to throw in some of this moss. I absolutely love frog moss. It always makes enclosures look so much better. Put it right by the water dish. And I'll give you guys a better look too when we are done, but it's looking pretty awesome. And of course, for no reason other than just aesthetic purposes, I am gonna throw in a couple little mushrooms by the moss because it's cute. And now when I make enclosures, it just doesn't feel right if I don't put some of these mushrooms in. <laughs> Now I actually do like some of these wood chips that are in the old enclosure. So this, we're just gonna get rid of this. We're done with that. No more of that, that's going away. Okay, so I'm just gonna take some of this and I just wanna sprinkle a little bit around just because it's it looks cool and I just like it. Gives a little bit of the texture, makes it look cooler. And then finally we are just gonna do, very predictable, but some leaf litter. Oh, and then there are some springtails still in here, so I am going to just put some of these in there as well. We are just gonna give it a good misting, make sure it's nice and humid. So here is what we have. We've got driftwood, cork bark, wood chips, moss, mushrooms, a big, big, big water bowl with some rocks in it, leaf litter, and like a ton of substrate. And as you can tell, this is a little bit longer. You've got like a couple, like about two inches longer, but, but it is still so much smaller because if you look at the base, it's tiny. So yeah, let's move Jinx on over and see what she thinks. I'll probably do a little handle. So let me show you just like how I handle my scorpion. I will say that Asian forest scorpions, flat rock scorpions, emperor scorpions, all of those are very dicey. Some might tolerate handling, some might not. Getting stung is always a risk, always a risk. So. You know, keep that in mind if you ever attempt. The venom is comparable to a bee sting I've heard. So normally what I do is I back them up into a cup like this. I put the cup down and we just back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Ta-da! And that is like super easy. They're not hard to rehouse at all. So here we are, the Asian forest scorpion. I'm not sure exactly what species mine is. So once I get the scorpion into this, I can pretty much easily like manipulate them into going where I want. Um, they're not very grippy, so just... Of course today is going to be like, eh, I don't want to go on your hand. Usually it's like totally fine with it, but today we're not really sure. Okay. There we go. So yeah, this is my Asian forest scorpion, Jinx. She is really well behaved as you can tell. I'm sure she would pinch me if I put my finger in her claws. I wouldn't do that though, so yeah. If you follow me on like Instagram or anything, you know I always call her my little goth lobster. So when they had one in the Wednesday series, I was like, oh my God, that's perfect. They can be pretty docile. So I mean, you know, take that as you want. Um, Again, there's always the risk of being stung, but they're pretty tame animals for the most part. I've had Jinx about three years now. But yeah, if you're thinking of getting an Asian forest scorpion, I say totally go for it. It was the first invert that I got besides tarantulas and spi like jumping spiders. They're really fun, they're active. A lot of the time they will walk out and just walk around and just be like okay with things. You obviously wanna try to avoid the stinger. Let me get a close up of that bad boy. Look at that, it's kinda hairy. Yeah, I don't even really see it use it for food most often. Usually it's out hunting with its claws which are also a little hairy. That's a little cute face right there. Hi, are you waving to the camera? Kinda. So yeah, I have handled Jinx a lot. I have not, knock on wood, had an issue. And her care is incredibly easy. I just make sure that her water dish is always full. And then normally I do a big heavy mist like once a week. And when I say heavy, I mean I really saturate the enclosure once a week. And then I kind of let the whole thing almost completely dry out besides the water dish. And I have done that for like three years now. No issues at all with her. Super easy. How I 
actually feed her most of the time is I just get tongs and I just take them and I put it like right in her little pincher right there and she just starts munching away. So I kind of tong feed her, I guess. You know, some scorpions will prefer to hunt, but she is just, I guess, she just takes them from the tongs. Um, like if you give her a super worm, she'll just let it burrow. So I, you know, unless you squish the head, which I don't like to do, it's kind of freaks me out. So I normally just put the worm right in the little, in the little thingy. And um, yeah, she's really cool. I really love keeping her. You know, their personalities, of course, vary. So please do not try to pick one up and get stung and be like, Cat did it and she didn't get stung. Well, I haven't gotten stung yet. That's a, there's always the possibility that one day Jinx is gonna wake up and she's gonna be tired of my sh and she is going to take that little tip of her tail, that little pokey part, and she's just gonna say, here, have it. But anyway, let's go ahead and try to put her in her new enclosure. How am I gonna put you in here? There you go. Oh, pfft. Wrong way. Wrong way, my friend. Beep. See, she's way more inclined to pinch than anything. All right. Are you ready? Ah, new home. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. Oh wow, what do you think? It's such a big improvement from the large, extra large Critter Keeper. Like, look how much space she has to explore and do scorpion things. Um, I do know that some people house Asian forest scorpions with other Asian forest scorpions. I've never done that before, and I don't think I'm going to try it because a lot of times they end up cannibalizing each other. I know people ask that question a lot if they can be cohabitated. You're going to need a lot more space than this if you wanted to put more than a couple together. Where are you going? Your tail so you can't sting me. Yeah, you're on your tail so you can't sting me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we just discovered what it is. And we're like, yes, I will take it. But yeah, I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like it if you did. Subscribe if you're not. And you want to be. Don't forget I have an Instagram that I use probably way too much. It's at tarantula.cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon podcast and a Teespring. It is all linked down below. I will see you guys soon. Let's get into the Patreon pet picks.